In this problem, we're going to use a little bit of calculus, and in particular, calculus of the trig and inverse trig functions to solve this very old problem. It's a very um, uh, ancient problem. It goes back to, a, it was first posed by a fellow called Reggio Montanus in his book on geometry. And he gives a geometric solution of this very cl cleverly using properties of circles, but we're going to solve this problem using calculus. The problem is this, we have a picture which is two meters sitting up on a wall. I think for in Reggio Montanus's version it, it was a statue that was lifted up. So you have a picture up here and it's six meters above the ground level. And the observer stands here and the picture is going to, to subtend some kind of angle alpha here with the observer's eye. And the question is then, how far do you stand away from the base? So in other words, I want to try and make, choose an X that makes the angle as big as possible so that you get the best possible view of the picture. So that's the idea. We're trying to find an X that maximizes the value of alpha. Now there are many ways of solving this problem. I'm just going to show you one particular method of solving it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another angle down here. Because I've got right angle triangles uh, in the picture, I'd like to be able to make use of that. And so I'm going to call this angle here beta. And that will enable me then to make use of right angled trigonometry. So firstly, I'm just going to brainstorm a little bit the triangle and see what we can write down. So we can say that the tangent of beta is 6 over x. And in the big triangle, I can say that the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to 8 over x. Now from these two equations, I could expand this out and do various things, but I'm going to use inverse trig here. So I'm going to just rearrange this here and say the alpha plus beta is the inverse tangent of 8 over x. And so I can say that alpha then is the inverse tangent of 8 over x. And then minus beta, but beta is the inverse tangent of 6 over x. So I can write this angle alpha now as a difference of two inverse tangents. There is in fact various ways of, of proceeding. There is in fact a formula for the difference of two inverse tangents and you could use that if you happen to know it here. But I'm going to do it without that. I'm just going to just use basic calculus here. So I'm going to now take the derivative of, I'm trying to maximize alpha. So I'm going to take the derivative d alpha dx and just use my properties of inverse tangent uh, derivatives plus the chain rule for the inside. So the derivative of inverse tan of anything is you write 1 over whatever that quantity is squared. And the chain rule says you've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, that's minus 8 over x squared. And I do the same with this one. So I've got minus and I do 1 plus 6 over x all squared. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of 6 over x, which is minus 6 over x squared. And we're going to put that equal to 0 for a stationary point. Important to write the English here. This derivative doesn't equal 0. It equals 0 at a stationary point. So I put a little bit of English there. Now we get a pretty complicated looking mess here, so, but I'm going to tidy it up a little bit. So I'm going to take this term on the other side and I'm going to multiply everything through by x squared. I'll leave you to check the uh, arithmetic here. So I'm going to end up with 8 over x squared plus 64. When I pull it on the other side and multiply both sides by top and bottom by x squared, on the other side I'm going to end up with 6 over x squared plus 36. So I've done a couple of steps in the algebra. You might like to just tidy it up a little bit. I can divide top and bottom here by um, 2. And so I can write this as 4 over x squared plus 64 equals uh, 3 over x squared plus 36. And now I can just cross multiply and simplify. So again, I'll leave you to check the arithmetic here. I get x squared is equal to 
48 after you've cross multiplied and uh, rearranged a little bit. And so that means x then is the square root of 48, which is 4 root 3. And so that value, 4 root 3, will make the derivative equal to 0. You have to check, possibly uh, by rearranging this and simplifying it and taking the second derivative, which would be a lot of work, but you could check that this does in fact give a maximum. So I'll leave you to check the calculations for that. So we need to check this is a maximum, or this gives a maximum. You can see sort of heuristically that you can sort of see that it will give a maximum because if I make x very large, then the angle alpha will become smaller and smaller. So you can see it won't have a minimum, except when, it, when x is infinite, then this will be zero. So it'll have no minimum, uh, and we have a stationary point, so we can sort of heuristically see that that must give me a maximum value.